Mbonjo in the Limbe 3 City Council is about Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this flagship program, Press Hour, on CRTV. A lot of things happened during the week. First of all, the, re the release of the results of the General Certificate of Education, both the ordinary and advanced level in the general subjects and the technical GCE. It marked an improved performance as compared with that of last year. We also had floods that crumbled the metallic culvert on the entrance to the economic capital city, Douala and more floods in the far north region that rendered 80 families homeless, threatening to destroy hundreds, if not thousands of homes, and floods in Limbe, where about five people died. We also had Christian Kadnatumi, who was proposing solutions to the crisis in the northwest and southwest regions of the country with some of his peers, the clerics. We're going to discuss this in this edition of Press Hour on CRTV with guests we have invited here today. First of all, Mr. Ngalami Elias, he is of the Echo Outlook. Yes, thank you, Moki, for inviting me. Thanks for always being there. Yeah. We have Mr. Danjuma Ibrahim, he is an architect, he is a city planner, he is a regional planner, and he is a university lecturer. All of this for you alone, sir. <laughs> thank you, sir. Okay. <laughs> it's the first time you're coming here, maybe. Must, must, uh, that's it. Okay, but what is the difference between uh, town planner and city planner before we get to the discussion? It depends on the scale of the conglomeration. What is a town and what is a city? I know it's in terms of population. Yeah, in terms of population. Usually the cutoff point would be around 10 million, and beyond that, you have cities. Okay, so eventually there's no town in Cameroon? No city, no city in Cameroon? Uh, by appellation, by definition, no. Wow. My appellation, yes. We shall be learning more from you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We also have Mr. Ebenezer Kanga. He is senior journalist, my senior colleague. Thanks for coming, sir. Thanks, Edwin. And we have Mr. Songwet Emmanuel Anyang, who is technical advisor number one in the Ministry of Housing and Urban Development. Thanks for coming, Mr. Songwet. Thank you for inviting me. An old-time friend when you were seen in Northwest <laughs> Regional <laughs> Delegate. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Before we set the ball rolling, let's have Emanuela Vimnyoy with what newspapers reported during the week. The Newsweek in Cameroon opened with the October 7 presidential elections, with most papers carrying different stories on the subject on their front pages. The bilingual daily Cameroon Tribune headlines support for poor BS candidature, 20 opposition political parties aligned. It refers to the decision by 20 opposition parties in Yaoundé to throw their weight behind the CPDM candidate. But the Voice newspaper sees these 20 political parties as mushroom parties, and to the horizon it goes beyond 20 opposition parties to including Belo Bubas and UDP party all backing poor BS candidature. The Guardian Post announces the support to BIA by the 20 opposition parties, but blames this on the inability of the opposition to form a coalition against the CPDM candidates. The same paper on its Friday edition quotes Dr. Fomoyo, I will not walk on blood to become president, an idea shared by the reporter. At a time, the Star newspaper is rather interested in the number of files deposited by those to run for the October 7 polls. The paper headlines 27 political parties against Paul Beer, saying that Elekam has got 10 days to decide on which application goes through. Breaking news calls this the race for a 2D, indicating that for just a seat, there are 28 contenders. Cameroon Tribune carries other stories relating to this year's presidential elections all through the week. But in other news, the socio-political upheavals rocking the northwest and southwest regions continue to preoccupy a good chunk of newspapers this week. 
The Lone English Daily, The Guardian Post headlines, Anglophone crisis, Bia gets marching orders from U.S. To the paper, the U.S. has advised that a public debate be organized to discuss the root causes of the crisis. The same paper also reports that the U.N. has said 8.5 billion CFA francs is needed for internally displaced Anglophones. The voice questions self-destruction price for Ambazonian nation. The paper brings to the fore the wanton destruction of the CDC plantations and attacks on vehicles transporting drinks, plus villages that have been reduced to ashes, lives and properties lost on a daily basis, while suggesting a change of strategy from the powers that be to end the over two years crisis. This at a time breaking news and the Horizon newspapers are announcing the brutal murder of a popular Catholic priest in Moyoka, southwest region, and the butchering of a police officer in Wum. The Guardian Post laments that the fallout of the crisis have been the 0% execution rate of public investment projects in Kumba 2 and 3 municipalities. But the paper does not end there. It headlines Catholic Church, PCC, and Muslim leaders convene all Anglophone conference. It pictures Christian Cardinal Tumi, Reverend Babila Fonchang, and Imam Mohammed Abubakar as initiators of the conference slated for the 29th and 30th of August in Boya. Eco Outlook took interest in the deadly floods and landslide that hit Limbe and Douala, reporting of more than four deaths and several houses destroyed. The Guardian Post comes on its heels to share the same idea, noting that many have been rendered homeless with the havoc wrecked by floods in Limbe. But Cameroon Tribune rather brings in government's assurance to victims of the mudslide in Limbe. The paper reports that the Southwest governor and officials of the Ministry of Decentralization are working for short and long-term solutions to the problem. The story of Defense Minister promising heavy sanctions on the soldier who raped a 17-year-old nursing mother in Bamenda plus PWD of Bamenda now in the Elite One Championship after 20 years of demotion and the inquiry by the head of state on the videos of military officials executing women and children are also carried by different newspapers. We end our press review on this sad story on the Guardian Post where a young boy was reportedly killed by a speeding vehicle in Damas neighborhood in Yaoundé as he celebrated his success in the A-level GCE exams after the results were released. Until we meet again, have an hour with the press. Thank you, Emanuela. Now, let's start commenting on what we just listened there. You newsmen went hunting during the weekend. We have to comment on what you found out. Let's start with you, uh, Elias Galame. Yes, I think uh, particularly the, the, the floods in, in, in Limbe and in, and in Douala that is uh, causing a lot of havoc. I think that was a, a really a key element in the news last week. You reported it once in Limbe? Of course, Echo Outlook reported it extensively because that's our specialty. But there, there was a problem there somehow. Some people reported 10 people died, the other people said four, some are saying five. Well, usually you may have different uh, 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 statistics when such uh, uh, a catastrophe, but most often um, a, a, res a responsible paper go for the official uh, data. So we reported the official figure. Thank you. And Mr. Danjuma Ibrahim, <coughs> what attracted your attention during the week? Well, uh, as uh, my neighbor said, uh, the major aspect seems to be the flood, as we recorded in Douala, in Limbe and other parts of the country. We shall be commenting on that. Ebenezer Kanga? Yes, I think what caught my attention this week was uh, the release of the results of the GCE. You know, uh, uh, what went on during the marking when the GCE board was attacked in Boya. <coughs> Sorry. And you know, for some years now, since the, since the political crisis started in the northwest and southwest regions, uh, those behind, those uh, perpetrating this crisis, have always said that there will be no GCE, that they will not write GCE this year, they will not mark GCE, they will not publish results. But all through the years, they've been proven wrong, because since the crisis started, each year, they write the GCE, they mark, and they publish the results. 
it indicates that those parents who are keeping their children back home will be the ones to regret it tomorrow because the, 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 the nation is continuing. The nation is not at a standstill because, because people who, who want to destroy it. So I was very, very happy that the results of the GC were released. And uh, the, it showed a marked improvement in the, in the success rate. Okay, yeah. we'll come to that. We'll talk about GC briefly in this program. Let me say uh, a song word. Yeah, thank you very much. What caught my attention most is uh, what was reported maybe in Kumba that uh, there was a zero percent execution of public investment budget and the floods in Limbe, Douala, and other places in the country, and also the internally displaced persons because of the Anglophone problem. The crisis in the northwest and southwest regions. Of course, <laughs> okay. of course. Now, what uh, two or three of you said had to do with the GCA. Let's comment about that. And for the facts and figures, Ebenezer was trying to say 64.7% passed to the advanced level as against 35% last year. 50% passed in the O level, up from 25% last year. And the GC technical advanced level, 73% passed against 23 in 2017, almost triple that number. And the technical O level, 58% as against 28.4% last year. What really do we make of it, Elias? Yes, I think uh, I, I, I like to give credit where it is due. Uh, like uh, uh, my colleague said a while ago, we all know under what conditions the GC was waiting this year, just like last year, and that uh, the, the, the teachers and the GC board authorities could be, could, uh, were able to hold sway and uh, the, 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 to the end of the process. I think it, the, the, it is our place to, to give them uh, credit. And... Um, for, for those who made it, I think we should say thumbs up. Hmm. And how good do you think the results were? People are, con they are questioning the, 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 the validity. Or, or they, the they, they were relatively good. You know, the results cannot be good everywhere. Some schools perform better than the others. But generally, there was an improvement. And uh, for those who are questioning the, 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 the validity of the results, I think they, they, sh they will be proving, proven wrong because you know that preparation for GCE is a personal engagement of the students. The students, even though uh, they, they were reading in a trouble, tr trouble zones, but the, 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 the problem had also a positive connotation because it, it uh, detached them from any distraction. So personally, I want to believe that students had the opportunity to stay indoors and concentrate on their books because there was no distraction, there was no time for it because of the insecurity outside. Mr. Danjuma, well, well, you're a lecturer, you teach although in, at a higher education level, but you should follow up these developments and know people are questioning if the deliberations did not bring the mark so low just to give a point, to prove a point that in spite of the fact that you are, there's trouble here and there, children are still going to school. Yeah, thank you very much. There, there could be some truism in that, but uh, before I get to answer that, I would like to make two pertinent remarks. The first is that cherishing children is a mark of a civilized society. So the more aware we are, the more we're going to make sure children get a good education, not only at the level of uh, formal instructions, but at the level of uh, various households. The second remark is that to measure a success you have to have objectives. Now, it is often said that you can identify a success by the amount of means. In this case, we're talking of smallness of means, greatness of purpose, and the outstanding achievement that followed it. So look at the environment in which these children studied. I think uh, whatever be the case, a principal educator will never allow anybody to scale and be given a certificate without any merit. Yeah. As an educator, as an instructor, that is paramount in any trained person, personality <laughs> who is in the education environment. Having said that, we will look at the result. Whatever people will say is that not everybody made it through. 
as the various percentage which we show, it means that those who were really committed and those who put in the effort made it through. And those people should be congratulated. Thank you. Uh, Ebenezer, let's look at the courage of those teachers. You congratulated the students, as Elias was saying, for braving the circumstances, especially in these two regions where the number of uh, children who go who are, is, is high. Now, how would you look at the situation of the teachers who were there? Some were killed. Y yes. Some uh, were kidnapped. Edwin, before I answer your question, let me just make this remark very, very quickly. Uh, that Cameroon is a very, very interesting country. It is probably the only country in the world where uh, you're an expert in your name. And when you talk, somebody who's only by himself comes to contest what you've said. It, it, it's strange in Cameroon. See, the, 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 those who handle the GC, from the teaching to the setting, to the organization of the examination, marking and publication of results, these are experts in this domain. And the GC board has been handling this thing very, very well for happening for several years now. How is it that today people come from nowhere and start questioning the results published by the GC board? Who are those who are better pleased to organize this exam than the GC board? Can, can anyone put up his finger and say, I know this thing more than the GC board? No. I think we should allow experts do their work. The GC board, if the GC board were, 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 were trying to be in complicity, the GC board would have declared everybody successful. They could have done that. But you see, not everybody passed the exam. It means that the GC board took time to do the marking appropriately. Now, coming to your question, teachers who were killed want to indeed very, very sincerely dove our hearts to these teachers who took the courage to carry the academic year right through despite all the threats and all what they went through. It's not been easy. I think these teachers deserve a very, very strong pat on the back. And it should serve as a lesson. You see, I, 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 it serves as a lesson to those who are keeping their children at home. At home. Yes. They say, uh, it is often said that when people are planting crops, you should also plant. Because if you don't plant, the day are harvesting, you will not harvest. People are doing everything to send their children to school today. They are writing the exams, taking the exams. Others are keeping their children at home. What are they going to do with these children that are keeping at home tomorrow? For two, three years now, their children will not be going to school, and parents are happy to keep them home. What are they going to do with these children? In any case, if you decide to keep their child at home, that's our business. Another parent wants his child to go to school, will send his child to school. No? They are free to do that. They are free to, you want to keep their child, keep their child. <laughs> Mr. Songwet, how do you look at the exam, the GC itself, and the courage of the students and the, 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 the teachers alike? Yes, I think uh, after the so-called crisis in the Anglophone zone, which was perpetuated by the teachers and the lawyers, the teachers decided to call off the strike. And I think it was wise for every good parent to send the child to school. And now I would like to see that to encourage the braveness of the teachers who have tried within all odds to see that these children actually complete a whole academic, academic year. year. And I would like to support what my neighbor for my love has said, Ebenezer Kanga. Ebenezer Kanga said that, I mean, this, there is no other instrument to measure the quality or the quality of education in Cameroon, in English-speaking Cameroon, than the GCE board. The GCE board has done it, and we need to congratulate those who wrote and passed, and those teachers who contributed in making it a success. Mm -hmm. but, but all of you just said something here that uh, some keep their children, that was, was the outcome. but those who wrote last year, I saw some going in for competitive exams like the uh, uh, ENS, like the uh, journalism school, and, and a host of those. I think it should be passing a message, a lesson. Let me and talk about education with you, Mr. Danjuma. Uh, obviously, uh, you can progress without going through this, this, the levels. Each level is calibrated, and you have to have the necessary mastery of that level before you move to the next level. So if people uh, are going in for some competitive exams, it means they have prepared adequately and they have the adequate qualification for it. So that is a, a welcome perspective which should be encouraged throughout.
And just to say that if, if you don't write the GC and pass, you'll not be able to go in for those competitive those exams. Competitive exams. <laughs> <laughs> so if you stay now, at home, you'll not write those exams. <laughs> now, also during the week, we got news of Christian Cardinal Tumi with some other clerics, Muslims, and other churches around who sat and thought that the crisis in the northwest and southwest regions could be solved with the organization of a of, of a meeting of all Anglophones, those who want to be there in the southwest regional town, Boya. We also got the reaction of the Minister of Communication, Government Spokesperson, Isa Chiruma Bakari, who said any initiative to bring peace will be accepted, but that calls for the uh, liberation that those who are arrested and locked up should be freed are uh, unheard of, that they are on that the government could not succumb to those calls, could not accept to grant the, 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 the freedom of those people arrested. And he gave other issues that that kill and defund will explain in this report. It was on the 8.30 p.m. CRTV television news of July the 27th that the Minister of Communication, Isa Chiruma Bakari, government spokesperson, as guest, made public the official position on the proposal of some religious leaders on an all-Anglophone general meeting to solve the current problem. He first admitted that a solution is a common target. All initiative, from, where, from wherever they come, provided that they contribute to, re, to restore peace, where it is disturbed all over the nation, such initiatives are welcome. But he has rejected putting the Republican forces at parity with secessionist fighters. To put at the same level our regular army at the same level with terrorists is unbearable, unacceptable. The Minister of Communication has also stated that secessionists under custody cannot be set free, as suggested. In a law-abiding nation like our country, it is unacceptable to ask the government to free those who became responsible, the school of our nation. Minister Isa Chiruma Baka repressed the head of state's offer of about 13 billion CFA francs for relief and reconstruction in the northwest and southwest regions. Now, Ebenezer Kanga, let me start with you. How do you how far do you think Christian Karnatumi and his team of clerics can go? But thanks once again, Edwin. If this is a very, very sensitive issue and um, I think in the situation in which we find ourselves, uh, no proposal that can bring peace should be neglected. Uh, so I think it's a good idea because since this crisis started, we had people say the church is not saying anything, the civil society is not saying anything. Now they're trying to do something. Uh, we should give them the, the possibility, the chance to carry through the idea they have in their minds. Because as you know, since this crisis started, all through, as we go down the lane, there's a lot of confusion. People say there should be dialogue. But at the same time, there's a lot of confusion. Because within Anglophones, there are those who want decentralization. There are those who want federalism. There are the secessionists who have become very, very intolerant and don't want to hear anything other than secession. So when people talk of dialogue, if Anglophones will go to the dialogue table, which are the points they will put on the table. So I think a conference like this one can be important for Anglophones to agree on what they will put on the table, a table of dialogue. So it's, it's a good idea to me, but at the same time, I ask myself, when we're going to organize an Anglophone conference, does it mean that the institutions and the representatives which you have there on the field right now are no longer relevant? We have member parliament. Traditional rulers. We have mayors. Traditional rulers. We have 
dignity, personalities. But I think the argument uh, Christian Katsumi and the rest are bringing here is that if the crisis have continued to this level is because many people don't listen to those people you have. Uh, 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 yes, I think I think uh, the the uh, we are all looking up to this uh, uh, conference because the main excuse that has been given this far for the absence of dialogue is that they don't know with whom to dialogue. There have been a lot of dissenting voices, and the, 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 the calling of this conference is for Anglophones to agree. I mean, after that conference, with the resolutions that will be taken, everybody will be bound by the outcome of that conference, be they parliamentarians, be they traditional rulers, because it is an all uh, uh, embodied uh, 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 conference and then the agenda will be proposed to, to, to the government, let's, let's put it that way, for, 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 for dialogue and whatever will come out of that dialogue will be, bi will be binding for everyone. In fact, it will disarm those who are uh, uh, taking positions that is in this area with what the, the, the conference will come out with. Now let's look at the, the reservations that were raised by the Minister of Communication, Mr. Danjuma. The Minister says any initiative to bring peace is acceptable, but that you bring terrorists, as he called them, with the regular forces together on one table, asking them to withdraw, the state cannot accept that. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, what, what I seem to see here is that uh, He's acting from the administrative and state background which he holds. I don't think he's holding a personal opinion, even though he sounds as if he's personal. What, uh, whatever happens, usually in solving a problem, the first thing is to identify the root cause of the problem. Once that has been done, the next thing is how do we take care of the cause, that's the source of the problem, what is it? How can you take care of it? Having done that, you then come back and clear out all uh, resulting consequences from the source that has generated those problems. And the third aspect is to put in place structures and mechanisms that will prevent the reoccurrence. And to go into a dialogue, I think here it has to be a give and take. You have to move to a stage where the two of the parties agree. Once an, a party in a dispute or in a conflict holds firm to his or her position, there might be no dialogue. visible mm -hmm. dialogue nor any <coughs> visible solution. I think what should be done here is to see what are the issues, who are the protagonists, and how do they go ahead. Once that is done, then we, we will be seeing probably a viable solution. We, we, the, the, the issue that uh, we could also say around is these uh, problems or these uh, issues against this government were raised by teachers and lawyers, and governments granted almost all of the points that they raised, it continues to this level, which means there's a fundamental problem somewhere that the government or those who are still dragging their feet are not ready to handle. Now, Ebenezer Kanga, before coming to me, Mr. Songwe, you had a, a, a taste of this. I remember recently you were with the Minister of Defense in the Southwest region and, uh, the, you, and, 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 and you, you, they attacked your convoy. Just, just, just tell us, when you see somebody who has come from the field, who saw what really happened, this type of initiative by the government, is it not a good one? Is it a bad one? By the priest? Yes, the initiative by the okay. priests, by the clerics. Uh, Edwin, I should say that uh, when people sit in Yaoundé, people sit in Yaoundé and don't go to the field, they don't know the magnitude. The in Yaoundé or out of the country? Oh, yes. Or, or those who are out of the country and telegrading this thing from there. They don't know the gravity of the situation on the ground. You need to go to the ground and uh, be victim like we, we were in the convoy of the Ministry of Defense. Then you know how serious this thing is. And to see how the, on the ground everything is completely spoiled. There's no life going on again in the villages, in Smolekombe, in all the houses 
All the houses are deserted. You don't find a single soul in that village. The situation is so serious that people need to know this in order to be able to accept to find a solution to this issue because those sitting only in Yaoundé are not going to the field. They don't know the gravity of the situation. Those teleguiding from, uh, uh, from abroad, from America, Belgium, sending WhatsApp messages every day, calling for people to burn. The situation on the ground is very, very So bad. the initiative now by the... The initiative is a good one. And the conditions right? by the government? No, the, 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 the conditions by, by the, the, the fear the government has is that it should not like put into question the existing institutions. The thing has to be done, this dialogue has to be done, this conference it has to hold in a way that government should not feel like they're putting into question existing institutions. I think that is where the matter, the, 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 that's the crux of the matter. But the initiative in itself is a very good one, and I think it is an initiative that should be worked on, and if we can make it materialize. So the, 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 the clerks should meet with the government, try to negotiate and the, and terms of the, the terms of the conference, which is what the minister was saying now. Yeah. Mr. Songwe, you spoke about the consequences of this and the, the situation in Kumba, where the execution of government projects is at zero level. Yeah, you see, uh, it actually touches me more because we are supposed to develop our society. And I think uh, the initiative of these men of God, whether it's from the Muslim faith or the Christian faith, I mean, Cardinal Tungui is somebody all of us know. Nobody can uh, actually dispute Cardinal Tungui's uh, um, ability to bring in peace. But I would like to say here that, I mean, the government was not all that waiting. The government had put in place a commission in charge of bilingualism and, and multiculturalism. And that commission has been doing its job very well and is giving out its report. And I think this uh, um, uh, 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 all Anglophone conference is just coming in to spice what the government already knows and you will know with me that no proposal to bring in peace just as others have said can be cancelled mm -hmm. i mean the minister has said it other panelists have said it you yourself Muki, you are saying the same thing i think we are it is a laudable initiative and we do welcome it before we talk okay just Ebenezer. You have been victim on, on, on two fronts. Y yes, of course. Uh, one is a confrontation you actually had with forces in Cameroon for uh, maybe error of name or so. Yes, um, <laughs> you see, uh, <laughs> I'm, I, I am, uh, I one day receive a bullet that no meant for me because of the name that my father gave to me, unfortunately. I didn't ask my father to give me this name. Ebenezer uh, Kanga. Yes, uh, you see, uh, I, I went to the office of... Uh, <laughs> I went to the office of, uh, of, of, of a member of government uh, in charge of security in any way, and uh, <coughs> on a booked audience to receive him, uh, to, to, to be received by him, uh, eventually he received us, and he told me, b b while we were sitting in the waiting room, I saw some colonels running up and down, <laughs> coming in and out, the movement up and down. Eventually, they went and clarified him that no, that is not Ebenezer Akwanga, that is Ebenezer Akanga. Eventually, when he went into his office, he said he thought Ebenezer Akwanga had come right to his office to meet him here. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, for um, <laughs> so you see, I, I, you see because of the name I, 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 my father gave me, I'm a victim of this. <laughs> for those who don't know, Ebenezer Akwanga is one of those uh, engineering, yes. as people say, this thing from outside. You wanted to add something? Yeah, I just wanted to add, some, add something on the government, on the <laughs> government condition. What the Minister of Communication just said. I think what the clerics are asking for is an enabling environment. Oh yes. I mean, when you want to talk peace. The, env the environment should be enabling enough because with the detention of people who were protesting, even though they are, t they are still tagging them, secessionists, take note, the majority of those in, in jail or lock locked up are victims of the, pro the, pro the, the entire uh, mm, protest. That, that is what you are saying. Because mm, you, yeah. you have to know that government has been carrying out investigations and maybe the minister is speaking from the point of view of investigations that have carried out this fine. That is what he said. No, Moki, what we are saying is that when, we, we, when they want to talk peace, 
and P in reality, we should avoid things like hate speech. Because to me, the appellation secessionist is hate, it's hate speech. This whole thing, the, we know where the problems lie. We know the, the, the demands of the, the regions that have been protesting. That is where the problem lies. The, such appellation, to me, is, propag but, is propagating uh, uh, hate speech. I think we should if, not, if we should not, we should not, we should not, no, we should not no, rule out the no, possibility of no, calling me, people the way because if, I said government is investigating. If those also. who were involved in 1984 coup d'etat could be pardoned for the purpose of peace, I don't see why people who protest for one reason or the other, which majority is, was social and eventually turned into political, why there should be, there, there, should, there should be no reason for setting them free. They were pardoned after the, the legal aspects of it had been carried out. They were not pardoned when the, uh, the, the fight yeah, was going. So that, let is us what, hope, that is what the let priests are saying, their, their, their for, the purpose, for the purpose of peace. And if we really want peace effectively, let the en enabling environment be created for the conference to take place because even those who are in the diaspora who have been invited they will they might not come for fear that they might be, repri they be reprimanded if, if they step their legs in the country well the government has said it's ready for dialogue the government has been dialoguing with people as it says and of course the church has joined in which is a lot of initiative because the minister said it all efforts to bring peace will be welcomed. Now, let's leave it and go to the last topic and the main topic we're talking or discussing for today, that of floods. We said earlier there were floods in Limbe, killed about five people, floods in Douala, uh, disrupted economic activities, and floods in the far north region of the country, which also rendered about 80 families homeless. Let's have this joint report. Mbonjo in the Limbe 3 city council is about to mourn its dead as lifeless bodies have been retrieved from the rubbles caused by the double landslide that occurred in the neighborhood this Tuesday. The government delegate of the Limbe city council, Mr. Andrew Motanga Munjimba, and elements of his council worked tirelessly on Tuesday night to free the portion of the road leading to Manowo Bay that was blocked by rubbles from the slide. I came out of the house. I saw the, 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 the wife of the late person outside there. She beckoned me that, oh, come on, come on, you go should come on. My son ran up and met with her, then took the first son, and then the girl was instead trying to go back to the house. He held her by the dress and then pulled her out of the house. The casualties doubled just minutes after some inhabitants of the neighborhood had rushed to help those that had been swallowed by the previous slide his second slide the cord I go arrest my boy and I'm coming back do another sound whoop. so the sound come I took my brother and the other guy that were there so I cannot only my brother I I, I, I recognize before we were together even me they remove me Despite the difficult terrain, the Limbe City Council mobilized efforts to retrieve victims from the mud and established circulation at the blocked portion of the road. The governor of the southwest region, Mr. Bernard Okalia Belai, visited the sinister zone early this Wednesday morning to comfort the victims. The problem is that this zone, people are not authorized to build houses here. It's not the first time according to their report. But unfortunately, the population does not respect those measures from the municipalities. Unfortunately, people lost their lives. A whole family is now completely destroyed while those residing along these risk zones have been urged by authorities to leave the area. It may sound like something new in the Douala 3 subdivision, but it is not. About one year ago, this same corvette collapsed and the government in an emergency response dispatched workers to the site who burnt midnight candles to re-establish traffic pending a permanent solution. Residents of the area say the company charged with rehabilitation works on the site has been working at snail peace. The problem is at the level of the negligence of the Russell company. We cannot understand what they are doing here. They initially started work on the deviation over there. This work started about two months ago. And at this point, they placed nodules over there. We thought the work would complete as soon as possible. 
Officials of the Littoral Regional Delegation of Public Works say heavy rains in the town of Douala Wednesday caused the collapse. Workers of the company charged with works on the site have kept sealed lips. For now, two deviations have been established temporarily in Yasa and Borne Dis to ease circulation between both ends of the town. The government has given the Razel company 72 hours to complete the deviation work that had been launched on the site before a complete replacement of the rusted culvert along the main road. Breastfeeding mothers, children and the elderly are amongst the 80 families rendered homeless after floodwaters swept through Gagli and Katwa in Marwan subdivision. The victims told CRTV that most of them barely managed to collect a few of their household belongings because of the ferocious nature of the floodwaters. Our houses are all gone. Three houses were here and have all been swept away. Our millet, goats, all our animals. See for yourself. There is nothing left. Administrative officials led by the senior divisional officer for Diamari, Ernest Ebele, have been to the communities to console the victims and reassure them of government's support. The victims have also been trying to rescue some food items like millet, and onion badly damaged by the floodwaters. Why measures are being taken to provide accommodation to the homeless by neighbors, the people have been advised to stop constructing houses in disaster-prone areas, especially these communities found in swampy areas and not far away from the floodplain of River Mayochanaga. Rainfall is what these people have been longing for to grow their crops, but too much of it is what has left more than 150 people in grief, wondering just what the future holds for them. Well, disturbing news there. I'm starting with the expert we have here. We have two of them. One is at the policy level, uh, a, a, a policy making level, and the other one is a pure expert, Mr. Danjuma Ibrahim Quente. What really is happening that we are seeing all of these problems in our society now? Is it what we hear, climate change? Is it negligence? What is happening? I think uh, it's, a, it's a mixture of all those things you just said. First of all, uh, uh, development should be done in a, an appropriate manner. Uh, it should be done based on key indicators, based on studies, and based on anticipated outcome. Somehow, some of this uh, meta methodology seems to have eluded uh, our system. <coughs> when you talk of an urban system, you're looking at all actors and all forces that are operating within the same context. So what happens is, uh, truly, there is a climatic change that we should have known. It's <coughs> been a uh, around for quite a while, for the past 10, 20 years. There's been a lot of talk about it. What really happens is that there is what they call sustainable development. And this is usually at articulated within three major aspects. You have the environment on the one hand, you have policy on the one hand, and you have the social, cultural, or socioeconomic aspect on the one hand. Of course, there are overlaps within these three precincts. Now, the, ex the environment, I'm talking of the natural environment, operates within some natural forces. And these natural forces usually the social cultural. Let, let, let's break it down and just come back. What has happened in Douala? Is it because of negligence? Then who is to blame? I see people throwing, they say floods. They are provoked by something. Yes. What has happened in Limbe, the way people are dying? The, the, two, the two cases are probably very clear to me, according to what you've seen. Uh, there is absence of infrastructure, key infrastructure, and absence of conscientious development. In the case of Dimbe, if people have the basic notion of effects and the consequences of action within the natural environment, they would have taken adequate precaution. The government asked them not to build there from the report. The government is one thing. The government has an operation mechanism which needs implementation and then control 
at the level of individuals. That means if you have a state which has different operation organs, then at the level of neighborhoods, you see have heads of operation, and that heads of operation transfers to quarter levels, and the quarter levels goes to each individual within that society. Okay, we will come back to you shortly, but let's have, you've heard the points here as well. Yeah. The government takes decisions, transfer that down to the people. You are of the government bench because you are a uh, technical advisor in charge of urban develop housing and urban <coughs> development. What is wrong? Do you take those and follow up right to the field? Yes, I think uh, he has explained it, but to be more, um, uh, to be down to earth, the problems, mm -hmm. I mean, there's an environmental problem, there's a societal problem, there's a problem left, there's a problem right. But I think for what has happened, the flood we are seeing is not for only um, Douala, Limbe, and Marwa. Our other towns, if they have the same quantity of rain, we also have the same problem. I'm looking at Sisiakwata in Bamenda and other places in Bafusam, in Yaoundé here and in other places. We can treat them case by case. The case of, uh, of, of Limbe could be divided into two. We have the down part of Down Beach where it was flooded. That one, it was very difficult to solve that problem because the level of the sea came up. And when the level of the sea came up because of high water, high tides, in other countries, call it Holland, they put sandbags and to dikes to cover. So the, that's one solution yeah, yeah, I'm proposing. Yep. That one was supposed is to do that? very, very yeah, expensive for, for us so now to think that we can start, I mean, building a returning wall to return the sea. At what level? Uh, you, you know the kilometer of uh, our borders, or the, the land, the shore, to the sea. So that is a problem. The second problem in Limbe is that of landslide. We had heavy rains. This is a return period. We had this in 2004 or six or something, 2004, in Limbe. And we had the same casualties. People died in their and, and government in the same you, place. You take the decision, you said they should not we build on that spot. We have said it clearly. Mm -hmm. Clearly. It's just that uh, we need now municipal police, or we need the councils. There are times I even ask myself, what is the United Council and City doing? They are supposed to come together in a conference and even hand this issue to the police. The police are supposed to check each house whether you have a bill didn't permit. No, no. Just as they are doing. No, or come yeah. even, how many Cameroonians can have that building permit? Let 80 me, percent, 90 let's percent. Learn, don't have. Let's learn. I have an impression you, you are you are trying to, to shift responsibility to the police. Not you the have police. Bill? We have council to the municipal police. councils. The municipal do councils. you do you give the means to them to work? The councils are supposed to come out with decent projects. Ask how many councils, how many are even aware of the fact that they need a project for a municipal police? Very few. How many councillors do participate actively to see that their environment is being taken care of? I'm talking about this environment of Limbe, where we had a landslide. We had landslide too in Bamenda, Sisiakwata. We have marked those places and said this is a red line where nobody is supposed to cross beyond that line. And because when they cross, you watch them crossing. Yeah, the government is not supposed to be a gendarme behind every individual. Mr. Song, the council is supposed <laughs> to be there. Uh, please, please. I know you're an environmental reporter. You are, uh, you are You are in You are in Marwa. You work there also. In, so the, the, the 80 families are rendered homeless. Just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, just the tip of the iceberg. It's, it's a very, very serious situation in a, a very serious issue in, in, in the far north. You know, the, the land is very, very flat. You see, uh, in in Marwa, when it, when the rain comes, when it rains, it rains to kill, and when uh, the when the sun comes, comes it comes to it comes to kill. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, I want to uh, say that when you look at the the, the flood that occurred, especially the, the in the in the uh, locality called Gakli, which is at the entrance to Marwa, at the uh, uh, the, the, the the junction to Mukulu, uh, I remember when the uh, late 
the former Secretary General of the National Assembly, uh, Yeno Osuma, was governor in the far north. There were serious flocks in that same locality, Gatli. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was said that people should not construct around there. And people have been constructed. Uh, when you go there today, it's now a whole village. So. <laughs> let, let, let's just get uh, Elvis Teke is already here with us to talk to us about the reactions we've had on social media. Elvis, over to you. Yes, we have had a good number of reactions, particularly pertaining to the GC. Let's begin with some from Herman Asa, who says, concerning the GC results, I really doubt the credibility of this exam from studies to writing, marking, and publication. I doubt if they match international standards. The GC of today is not that of the year 2000. Moki Ndoko says, uh, do we have um, urban planning in some towns? If so, Limbe wouldn't have experienced floods, landslide, and the dead toll, uh, dead toll of last week. Mary Kila comes with urban planning and says, urban planning is really a great problem to us. Cameroonians are first to blame. They throw dirt everywhere. Gutters are full of bottles. At times, you see garbage cans empty, but dirt are thrown on the ground. I think government should create some sanctions. Ndoki uh, Moki says, I praise the re resilience of teachers. If after threats and the gun scare saga, they still accept the invitation and mark beyond their paid days, the GCE. And the homeboy says, how can students, especially those of the two English-speaking regions who have studied for less than five months, sit and pass the exams? Uh, Baika Enes Shom says I wish to congratulate those who made it in this GCE and encourage those who did not that the results were actually good but it was surprised because uh, students who have complete respect for their teachers some using phone in class could have succeeded this way and uh, something went wrong maybe there was leakage or certain considerations within our class and again many of the students that who succeeded cannot continue the next level because of lack of combinations in form five and poor grades for upstate that was bear ns writing from oku and uh, sama ngo james says the gce is the first of its kind because of his proclamation which came earlier than in previous years and the lapses uh he repeats things like leakages here and there and subjects cancelled and rewrote and we conclude with st uh, statesman lang who says GCE nowadays is not the true test of knowledge, as is the quality as the quality of its products cannot stand the test of time. Keep monitoring and telling us and tell us more. Uh, we you also send our reactions in regards to those who have been reacting. Thank you. Now let we have a short, a short time to leave. I want us to be concluding. Mm -hmm. It's true the topic uh, is, is interesting and people as people are reacting, but you have been an environmental reporter. You know these issues. What should be the way forward? Have our cities been abandoned? Uh, our cities really have been abandoned because uh, it is a shared responsibility. Experts, it's a shared responsibility. You see, environment experts uh, will, 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 will tell you that if you have these winds for over a, a, a week, it's an indication. Uh, it's, it's an indication of, uh, of of climate change, which unfortunately some people still think is a mere slogan. But it's a reality. The consequences are there. So with, with the, 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 the the floods. Experts will still tell you, City Plus, exa for example, experts will still tell you are man-made because of uncivic behavior of the population. The uh, 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 plastic, plastic bags, plastic bottles, the usage have been banned. But how effective, how effective is the implementation? That is the big question. He talked of shared responsibility. The councils, the infrastructures are not there. If you go to some big cities uh, in, out, of the, out, out, out of Cameroon, you'll find canals channel uh, walk uh, 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 all through the, the, the city channeling uh, can, uh, channeling, channeling water. water some councils provide do what they call water uh, rainwater harvesting households are provided with huge tanks of over 500 liters they are subsidized and and then they, they, they harvest this rainwater and this reduce the the rate of uh, water flow in cities and this is channeled to the, to the main canal so these are some of the ways that some cities are fighting out uh, uh, floods, but especially at the level of implementing measures such as the, the plastic ban. I think if the city, city police is created, 
to fight against the, 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 the garbage disposal, to mm -hmm. fight against the usage of plastic, uh, 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 plastic. Uh, Galam, Galam, me and Asongera prepare yes. police. Yes. Yes. No, I let's go ahead. Let's go. Have our cities been abandoned? We are concluding already. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, cities <coughs> have actually not been abandoned. What seems to happen is that uh, uh, the decision makers seems to function reactively instead of functioning proactively. What I mean by that is usually in other places, uh, uh, as uh, he has just said, you have different mechanisms and different measures to check, first of all, construction, to check uh, uh, drainage, and so on. Now, the case of Japan, they have huge of our underground tanks that can contain hundreds of millions of liters of water <laughs> in case of flood. These are uh, proactive measures. What <coughs> seems to happen elsewhere is that there is a decision support system whereby each aspect is anticipated. A river flow is predicted in case of flow how far the overflow will go and who are the people to be affected. So by that, they then provide remediary accessories such as uh, civic centers or, or intervention measures. I think, Mr. Danjima, I'm sorry to stop you there because we are crossing out of town. Uh, Ebenezer Kanga, in five seconds, please. In five seconds, uh, I will say uh, I've had the privilege uh, to uh, travel out of this country and when I come back, I simply ask myself, our own leaders, when they go abroad, do they see what is happening there? <laughs> How is it that the situation is so bad here? Why can they not try to do what others are doing and succeeding elsewhere? That, that's my worry. Mr. Dan Mr. Asongue? Yes, I think uh, our cities are not being abandoned. I think uh, planning, most of our towns do have planification documents, what we call master plan, land use plan. These are all planification documents. But the problem now with us in Cameroon is that land which we think that is owned by the state, but most of the national land is being occupied by persons, and they decide to do activities on those land, illegal constructions that the state and the council at the time is, doesn't know. He gave a proposal of harvesting water. I think that is a laudable initiative, which we think that if we use, for example, you know with me that the water that is being given <coughs> to each and every home, maybe only 5% is being used for drinking. Most of the drinkable water, we use it in flushing our toilets. Mm -hmm. We use it in doing other things. If we can harvest this water and use it in, uh, in flushing our toilets and bathing and doing other things, it will serve a lot, especially in Yaoundé where there's water crisis. I will come back to say that our towns have planification documents. These documents are supposed to be followed up on a daily basis by the councils. It's true that our municipal councillors and the mayors, they are supposed to be doing their job, especially the councillors. If I ask you, Muki, do you know the councillor of your quarter here in Yaoundé? You no. say you don't know, even in the village. So what yeah. is he doing? And that's the person you voted for. You do thank not vote for the mayor. I want to thank you very much, gentlemen, for coming here to the set. I want to thank Galami Elias for being there. I want to thank the Danjuma Ibrahim Quenti, architect, uh, the urban uh, city developer, city planner, for being there. Ebenezer Kanga, thank you. Thank you. Songet Emmanuel, technical advisor number one in Ministry of Housing and Urban Development. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. I'm Moki Edwin Kinzaka. Thank you for watching.